Hey everyone, Dan here with Hardly Brief Tutorials. Today we're going to look at player jumping. How can we get our character up in the air, add force to it, and get him jumping around our map? So, in this first part of the video, we're going to look at jump inputs. So we're going to set up our controller and keyboard. Then we're going to look at adding physics. How can we manipulate our rigid body to get our player up in the air? Lastly, we're going to adjust the global 2D physics settings to make the jump feel a little bit snappier, a bit more responsive. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Click the notification icon to get notified about more videos coming up over the next few weeks. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. We're in our project and in order to get jumping to work, we need to go ahead and set up our player inputs. So I'm gonna go to our game controller asset, double click on it to open it up. If you need to see a better tutorial on how to set all this up, I'll link it now. Uh, and you can check out the input video I did. Uh, but what we need to do is go to actions, click the plus button, and we're going to label this one jump. And our first binding is going to be the A button on the controller. So I'm going to hit listen, hit A, button south. I'm going to click the plus button to add another binding, and that's going to be our space bar. So I'm going to go to path, listen, space bar. There we go. All right, so now that this is set up to auto save and auto generate, it's gonna regenerate our game control script. We can go into our player controller and actually add the actions that we want for jumping. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna have similar setup with our crouch. It's gonna be a jump press and end jump pretty much. So let's go ahead and add that. We're gonna say controls dot player controls dot jump and we'll get these started plus equals context lambda so equals greater than and we're gonna say uh, jump and we have not added that method yet but we'll do that in a moment then we'll say controls player controls jump dot canceled plus equals context lambda and then in jump pretty simple but now we need to actually go ahead and define what's happening in those methods so below crouch and stand up we're going to create a private void and we call it jump and then we'll do another private void and end jump is what we called it now in this again we're just going to be setting a flag true or false uh, but these methods allow us to expand it so if we ever want to add more functionality we'll be able to do that so in order to actually change that flag we need to add it so we're gonna go back up here to the top and say public bool and we'll call this jump pressed and we're gonna set up the get and our private set again to reiterate this is just so that we can access this variable outside this class but we can only set it within this class so in my jump method I'm gonna say jump pressed is equal to true and in my end jump method we're gonna say jump press is equal to false and that's all we need to do to set up our controls we're in our player movement script now and we're gonna go ahead and add the jump information that we need to go ahead and get our jump working so under the header for crouch info I'm gonna actually highlight the that header and paste it below we're gonna change crouch to jump and then we're gonna add two variables in this video which will be used to get our jumping working the first one's gonna be a public float and it's gonna be called jump force this is gonna be I'm gonna set this equal to five and this is gonna be the force the value that we apply to our character to actually get the rigid body to go up in the air and we're making it public so that we can adjust it in the inspector so you can fine-tune your game to make sure like this is exactly what you want the other thing we're going to do is the same thing as this is crouching status. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in there, and we're going to change it to has jumped. And then what we want to do is set has jumped equal to false at the very beginning. So we're going to say in the awake method. So we'll say has jumped is equal to false. And while we're in here, we're also going to set is crouching equal to false at the beginning as well just like that so we'll set is crouching is equal to has jumped which is also equal to false let's scroll down and actually add the method that we're going to be calling jump so in this method this is where we're going to add our actual force to our rigid body which will enable us to go up in the air so we're going to say private void jump 
And the first thing we want to do is check our player control script to see if we've actually pressed the jump button. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did with crouch and stand up and say if player controls dot jump pressed is true, then what? Well, we want to set that status flag has jumped equal to true because we know we've jumped. And then we want to add force to our rigid body. So if you remember in a couple videos ago, we actually cached our rigid body by getting the component rigid body 2D and storing it in the variable called rigid body. So I'm going to double click that, copy it, scroll back down, and in our if statement under the has jumped, we're going to say rigid body dot add force. And then this takes two variables. We're going to, the first one is going to be of new vector. So we're going to say new vector two, and it takes an X and a Y. If we add a number other than zero as the X, it's going to actually thrust our character to the left or the right. And we don't want to do that when we jump. We just want to go straight up in the air. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. And then for our Y, we're going to use that variable we created called jump force. Lastly, for this method to work the way we want, we're going to add a force mode 2D. So we're going to say force mode 2D dot impulse. There's another one in here called force. And impulse is perfect for sudden movements, so a jump or an explosion. The other one, force, is great for constant movements. So if you need a constant force that's pushing something over time, then you would use force mode dot force. We need to write one more if statement, and we're going to place this if statement just above this one that we wrote. And this is going to actually set our flag, has jump flag, to false. So we're going to say if exclamation point player controls dot jump to press is false, then what do we do? Well, then we want to set our has jumped equals to false. So we're just resetting that status flag. Lastly, to get this to work, we need to add this jump method to our fixed update method. So I'm going to highlight jumped and then control C to copy it. I'm going to paste it right below crouch, add our semicolon, and now we're ready to go and test it out in Unity. So we're back in Unity now. We're going to press play and we're going to test to see how our jump works. I hit the space bar. Our character flies way too far, right? So our initial instinct is let's go ahead and adjust our jump force back to one and see how that works. And you can see every time I hit the space bar, our player jumps up a little bit, a little hop, but it's at varying heights. And what's happening is that our space bar is continuously being pressed and Unity, rightfully so, is just continuously adding that force of one or whatever your jump force is. And it's going to allow our player to continuously jump in the air. So if I hold down space bar, you'll see we just fly up into the air. So what we need to do is use that has jump status flag and stop that from happening. So let's go ahead back into our player movement script and work on that. In the player movement script now, I'm in our jump method. I'm going to highlight the has jump status flag and we're going to add it to the second if statement. So after player controls dot jump press is true, we're going to say and exclamation point has jumped is false. When, if that's the case, then we're going to go ahead and add our force and allow our player to jump. I'm going to control us to save and we'll jump back into Unity. Make sure your jump force is set back to five. Press play. And I'm going to hit the space bar and our character is going to jump. It's going to jump to the same height. I can hold down space bar like I am right now and it's not making our character or not allowing our character just to jump a thousand times. Uh, which is the behavior that we want. One more thing I wanted to discuss in this video was the global physics settings that are for this, for this project. So one thing to demonstrate, if I press play and our character jumps, it kind of seems a bit floaty. And this is more exaggerated if I change the jump force to let's say 15, press play, and our character kind of just slowly floats down. It doesn't seem like, it's not snappy. And it's kind of hard to describe, but it just doesn't feel that responsive when you play. So one way to fix this is by increasing the amount of gravity that's applied to the character. It's going to make everything faster, but it's going to feel better. So in order to do that, we go to Edit, Project Settings. And at the very top for Physics 2D, you can see that gravity is currently set to negative 9.81. We're going to change this value to negative 50. So we're increasing it by a lot, but overall, it's going to feel a lot better. So let's go back into Unity. I'm going to change Jump Force to 15. Again, press play. Our character is going to kind of slam to the ground, which you probably just saw now. But when I press the space bar and hit A, it just feels overall better. We get a much snappier jump, 
feels like it's instantly happening and we're coming back to the ground and that's how you can adjust some physics settings in Unity. So that's the basics of jumping. In the next video, we're going to look at using raycasts and overlapping colliders to actually fine tune our jumping mechanics and then moving on to some other more advanced mechanics like our multi jump. Uh, but hopefully you guys like the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps a lot. Share the video if you can and hit the notification icon so you get notified when the next video is released. Otherwise, you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you guys next time.